Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of From Trees Into These. I'm Jeff. Um, thank you for joining in. Uh, today we're going to teach you how to make a ripping chain for like an Alaskan sawmill out of a standard uh, skip tooth chain like you would buy at a store. The skip tooth chains are about 30 to 35 bucks if you go pay full retail. Sometimes you can get them online for 15, 20, 25 bucks. Um, but a ripping chain, like a Grandberg ripping chain, is usually around 75 to 100 dollars. And so we're gonna make our own. I think they're gonna be just as good and we'll do another episode later and show how well they work and we'll actually rip some boards. So thanks for tuning in fans. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe if you like, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. We're gonna start off here with a standard uh, crosscut chain. I had this made up at my local saw shop. Um, thank you Kaiser Power Equipment and Outdoor. And as you can see, there's always fun tangles in it. I can do another video to show you how to get these untangled. But as you can see, this is a standard cross-cut chain. It's a skip tooth, so instead of a tooth on every link, there's a skip portion in there. Uh, I've got a Still 362, which is a medium-powered saw. It's a Pro Series, but it doesn't have the power of some of the huge saws, the big bores. And so a skip tooth chain will allow the RPMs to get up a little bit higher without bogging it down, cutting every tooth. We're going to take this today and we're going to grind it down, change the pitch on the cut from a 30 degree to a 10 degree, and we are going to take out every few teeth so that it uh, works better as a ripping chain. So there's going to be more clearing teeth or scraping teeth and uh, fewer cutting teeth and I'll explain how that works here in a little bit. As you can see here, you've got a cutting tooth at 30 degrees here. We've got a skip. We've got a 30 degree cutting tooth here. Here's your limiters. Um, we're gonna take out two of these, leave two, take out two, leave two, um, and we'll do that by cutting these off with a Dremel tool. You can use a grinder. Uh, I used a Dremel tool and it worked out pretty good. Here's a blade that I just completed. As you can see here, we've got two good teeth. And then we move on over and here's one that I've taken out. Here's the next one that I've taken out. And you can see it's about half the width of a standard cutting tooth here compared to here. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really simple and we're going to have a good time doing it. You can do this several different ways. You can use a regular hand file. You can use a file guide, something with a uh, angle on it. Or you can use an electric one like I've got here. This is no rocket science. It's nothing special. This is a good old Harbor Freight chainsaw sharpening wheel. And as you can see, I'm going to get it set up. Right now it's a 30 degree angle and I've got it set to 10 degrees here. Sorry for the mess, this has been well used. And so when I grind this down, it's going to re-angle that completely. I don't want to take any more off than I have to because I want this blade to be, or the chain to be able to be sharpened many, many times over the years as I use it. And so there's no reason to take off any more than you have to. I've already preset my depth gate or my my set gauge how far back it's going to grind off the tooth. I've also set my depth gauge of how far down it's going to go. You want to go down until just before you get into the link there so that you get that whole radius in there. I'm going to go ahead and show you how it's done and here we go. Also I want to do it in about 10 little tiny passes so that you don't get that too heated up and take away the temper of it. It will never stay sharp for long if you take that temper out. We're gonna give it a little kiss pass. Another one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I've made it all the way down to the stop gauge so I can't go any further. And by doing that, I'm actually taking the whole grind off, but I'm giving it kiss passes and just a half a second to cool down in between processes, which happens really thick with such, really quickly when it has such thin metal like this. Um, I believe that that will, as you can see, there's no, there's no discoloration, no patina color. Um, 
showing that there's not been a whole lot of heat transferred into this. We'll go on to the next one and I'll show you one more time. One, two, you can see it's already re-angled the cut. Three, four, five, we should be about halfway. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm all the way down to my stop. My last one is just a really light pass. And that way it gets it nice and sharp when we go. I can just pull my skin across it right there and it's super catchy, which is a good sign. It means it's catching on the little lines on your fingers. That means it's a good sharp cut. We're gonna go do this with all of the rest of the ones that are on this angle. Then we'll reset the sharpener here to do the other side so we're alternating back and forth. Once we get all of this sharp, we're gonna go through and cut off every second. We're gonna cut off two of every other two cutting teeth so that they're actually clearing teeth instead of all cutting teeth. It'll give it a much smoother cut when we're ripping logs um, so that we can use our Alaskan sawmill. Okay, I've got all my reground angles on the one side. I don't know if the camera's picking that up real well. You can see that's now a 10 degree cut compared to a 30 degree cut. I'm trying to get you a good enough angle, there you go. That's a 30 degree cut compared to a 10 degree cut. We're going to do the other teeth, every other tooth. So I'm gonna reset this here over to the other side so that we can cut the other angle. I'm gonna slide that over to right at 10 degrees. Now normally, if we were cutting that, it would be 30 degrees. Here's what a 30 degree cut looks like. And as you can see, that blade comes right down, the cutting wheel comes right down to the exact angle that this tooth is here. But since we're regrinding it to a 10 degree angle for a ripping chain, we're gonna slide that over, set our parameters. Looks like it's pretty close. Here, give that a quick shot. Tighten that in. You can see I'm getting just the point there. And further in, further. And down to the stop. On to the next two. Normally I'd start by the locating link there, the one that's painted yellow, so that I don't accidentally sharpen the teeth more than once. But because we're going to a completely different angle, it's real easy to tell just by eyeballing it when you come up to the one that you started on. It takes me about five minutes to go through the entire chain for each side, 10 minutes total. And like I say, I'm doing these small passes instead of one big one to keep it from heating up too much and taking the temper or the hardness out of it. Okay, and there we've made it back to the first one that we did at 10 degrees. So now we're ready to stick it on the bar over here and start uh, taking some of those cutting profiles off of the drum. Okay, now I'm gonna transfer the chain over to the bar here. It's a 28 inch bar. We'll just set it on there. This is more or less to help hold it while I go through with the Dremel tool and cut it off. I'm just gonna put it in a temporary vise here. When I do so, I'll hold a piece of aluminum on either side to give it enough spacing for that chain to slide underneath. Just 
just sense that down that way we can rotate the chain through maybe it lifted up just a hair here okay so now we can slide it through and clamp it down so that we can grind it off. What I'm going to do first though, is take a mark and mark the ones that I'm going to grind off. So there's two. We're gonna skip the next two. Skip this, skip that. Grind these two. Grinding these two, skipping these two. Grinding these two. I don't really need to mark them, but it will save me from screwing up later. Skip two, mark two. Skip two, mark two. And so on. The reason you do them in sets of two is because you don't want to have a whole lot of right side cutters in a row with no left side cutters and vice versa. And I think on this particular chain count, these teeth count, I end up running into the last four of them. We skip these two, we're grinding these two. Well, it turns out that we're grinding these two as well. So what I'm going to do, instead of grinding these completely off like we are in the other ones, I'm going to grind these halfway, kind of meet in the middle, split the difference. But first we'll start on one that we're going to do a full grind on. So this will be our first one. Because I don't want the chain as I'm taking the Dremel tool to it to bind up like that, I'm just going to put a little weight on it with some vice grips here, a little clamp. And that'll just give it enough weight to hold that tooth from flipping back too badly. I'm gonna take my Dremel. I like to brace my hand against something to hold it steady. I'm gonna fire it up. I just have a regular cutting wheel on here, just a little fiber wheel. Okay, now you can see that I've cut the cutting profile off of this here and this one here. So there's going to be a little bit of a cut there, but it's going to be mostly a clearing tooth. So it's going to actually clear a lot of that uh, sawdust out of the way. Whereas this one here is full width. This whole profile right here up front is what's doing the cutting on the wood and it's full length. So we're skipping every other one. This will help the blade speed to stay high. It'll give you a much cleaner Clear out all of those sawdust shavings as it's going. Anytime you're doing a ripping cut, the length of the shavings are gonna be a lot longer because you're going with the grain or sometimes through the grain, but you're going at somewhat of an angle. Whereas when you're cross cutting a piece of wood, it's cutting, chopping the grain and the sawdust is going to be much finer. It's a lot easier for it to clear faster. So that's why we're cutting every other one. Well, every two other ones. And we're going to do that with the rest of the chain. I'll speed that speed back up for you so you don't have to endure the entire thing. As you can see, I've worn the wheel right off and it broke, so I'm gonna change that out. As you can see, with a, with a new cutoff wheel, it goes a lot faster. Alas, we are at the point where there's four in a row that we're needing to cut off. So instead of going and cutting most of it off to the edge here, I'm going to go halfway and leave these about, oh, a third to a half there, whereas cutting 
two thirds of it off before. Um, we'll see how that looks. So you can see I left the profile a little bit more. I cut off two thirds of the other ones. I'm leaving two thirds of it here and cutting off only one third. Once again, I mentioned there's four in a row just because that's the way that the number of links came out to be. We'll cut off these last two and then I'll show you the end product. All right, so that's it. We are finished with our homemade do-it-yourself ripping chain. So real quickly, let's talk about what we did here. We reground the profile to 10 degrees for a more efficient ripping chain. It's a different cutting angle. It's going to make it better for cutting along the grain. We've taken every two teeth and taken them off, about two thirds of those off. So there's just a little bit of profile and those will help to clear and sweep out the um, sawdust as we're cutting. And then we've left two at 10 degree angles, trimmed off two, and you can see the side profile there. Sorry if the camera is not that great for this lighting, but that will make a much more efficient, faster cutting, a lot cleaner cutting when it comes to ripping a uh, log. And since I do mostly oak here, I imagine I'm going to be sharpening these chains quite often. So fortunately I have an electric sharpener. I've also got my files and file guides so I can do it out in the field. One last thing I'd like to mention is I always take my boxes and I label them with what chain is in there so that I don't get them mixed up. Because I have seven or eight chainsaws and several of them are multi bar like this one here, 28 inch bar for my still. I've got a 25 inch bar, a 20 inch bar, and I have multiple chains for every single one of them. The reason I always keep multiple chains around is because I don't want to stop in the middle of a job. You know, it's a big farm here. It's a long way from the shop. I don't want to be cutting on a log or ripping a log and have it start to get dull and have to stop what I'm doing, hop on the four wheeler or the tractor, run a half mile back up to the shop just to sharpen it up and get back down there. In the winter time, daylight is a lot shorter. I like to make the best use of it. And so I take two or three chains with me every time I do a large cutting job. And that way, as they start to get dull, I can just swap them out really quickly. Um, it's just a matter of a minute or two and get back to cutting. And then once I'm done for the day, once the sun goes down, or if it's a rainy day like today, I can take all three of those dull chains or six of them if I'm using several different ones or if it's a big job. And I'll go ahead and uh, camp out in the shop here and sharpen them all up at once. It's a lot more efficient. It's a lot faster to do multiple one after the next instead of stopping your job, coming up, putting another new edge on it, going back down and doing it all over again. So it's wise to invest in several chains. And you know, if you do hit a nail or a piece of barbed wire or something and it ruins that, that chain and you have to really grind it down, at least you have a spare or a couple of spares that you can swap out really quickly and get back to the job at hand. That way you're making best use of your time. And it's always, uh, always short when you're on the farm. Well, there you go. We've got two do-it-yourself ripping chains all made up. Unfortunately, it's pouring down rain outside. Otherwise, I would go hook it up to the Alaskan sawmill and rip a few logs and show you how it all turns out. But stay tuned till next time when we do that, when the sun comes out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to hit the like button, share it, uh, subscribe if you like. And I really enjoyed uh, hanging out with you guys. I'll talk to you soon.